Hello and welcome. We are going to be talking about the state of Tennessee versus John Thomas Scope, also known as the Scopes Trial or the Scopes Monkey Trial, which is an American legal case from July of 1925. And this case is about whether um, evolution could be taught in state-funded schools or if um, only classical Christian uh, Genesis theory could be taught instead. Uh, this is a really interesting case because uh, it is a showcase. It was a it was specifically staged for various reasons, and we're going to be talking about those. And it is not what you would classify as a um, a reactionary case. This is actually to test a law, and so the law that is testing is the violation of the Tennessee's Butler Act, and the Butler Act made it illegal unlawful to teach American um, evolution, sorry, human evolution in any state funded school. Now, as soon as the Butler Act comes into effect, um, uh, people wanted to test it. They wanted to um, determine whether this was indeed a lawful act. And so what ends up happening is that the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, ends up putting out a statement saying that they will help fund and provide defense for anyone who wants to test this law. Now, um, it's it's staged in this small town of Dayton, Tennessee, and uh, what ends up happening is the mayor of Dayton um, ends up going to a substitute high school teacher. He's not the um, original teacher for this, um, John uh, T. Scopes, and he says, okay, I'm going to ask you some questions. And one of them, one of the things he asked, he said, okay, do you feel that you can teach, ev uh, you can teach science without teaching human evolution? And Scopes said, no, he can't. And then the mayor ends up saying, um, do you use um, George William Hunter's book, uh, Civic Biology Presented, uh, Presented in Problems, which was published in 1914, and uh, Scope says, yes, he does, he did. And he said, would you be willing to te testify that you're doing this? And he said, of course, I believe that you can do this. Now, um, Hunter's book is uh, really controversial in many ways. It does give the theory of evolution, but it also gives the theory of race and eugenics um, that are in the pages too. So it's a um, uh, not the best source. Um, and so the mayor wanted to do this because the town of Dayton was beginning to die a little bit and they needed to bring in more people. So they knew if they tested this law, it would become such a show trial that they could actually bring in enough money and funds. Um, and the mayor very purposely does this. He, um, wanted to make sure that, um, that, uh, Scope actually did incriminate himself to his to the mayor so he could testify as well. So you have um, uh, this understanding that this law needs to be challenged. You get someone set up to challenge this law. And it's not like we're Inherit the Wind, if you have seen this fantastic movie uh, about the Scopes uh, monkey trial. It's not like where they're burning effigies or anything. In fact, actually, you have an entire fair that shows up. You have so many people that flock to Dayton that um, it becomes very celebratory. Uh, you have um, so many people pack into the courtroom that eventually on day two of the courtroom, they end up moving it out into the lawns because they hit, there was a rumor that the floor of the courtroom was going to break. Um, you have thousands upon thousands of people that descend on Dayton, and primarily they want to see um, a, a contest between William Jennings Bryan and Clarence Darrow. Now, there are many other people on the defense team, and they actually do a majority of the work. Um, but William um, Jennings Bryan, who is a th three-time presidential candidate, he um, ends up arguing for the uh, sorry for the prosecution um, as saying that he, in fact, is an expert in um, in the Bible, and he's much older at this point, and he firmly believed that uh, the morality of the United States was at um, at fault because of the lack of Christian values. So he wanted to change that and he felt like evolution was a real threat. He was big into um, public displays. He uh, liked having large headlines on him, but the people that did a lot of large amount of the work was Thomas Stewart, who was a graduate graduate from um, um, 
Cumberland uh, State uh, School of Law and later becomes a U.S. Senator and uh, Stewart was aided by Dayton attorney Gordon McKenzie. So they actually do a lot of the grant work, but William Jennings Bryan tends to be the figurehead. Well, on the defense uh, aside is you have Clarence Darrow. Now, Clarence Darrow really wanted this case and he wanted it because he wanted to show that William Jennings Bryan was indeed a buffoon. Um, they liked, uh, he wanted to square off against him. A lot of people in the ACLU did not want uh, Darrow because Darrow was seen as hotly contentious. Um, but uh, they end up forming a legal team of great minds. Um, one of them is Arthur Garfield Hayes and the other one's Dudley Field Malone. And uh, they do, a, again, a lot of the grunt work where Darrow is very much seen as this. In fact, Hayes ends up giving one of the um, better speeches within the trial that kind of resonates um, greatly. And it's, all, it's the one that's most quoted and misquoted to Darrow. Um, but he ends up doing this. So Again, this is a show t trial. They have uh, these big names uh, of uh, who come to Dayton, which is Darrow and Brian, and you have people present on each side. They wanted to have this square off, um, and it is a very famed case that ends up happening. Um, and the the trial was uh, pretty much publicized as a fundamentalist versus modernist conservatory. The modernists who said evolution uh, was not inconsistent with religion um, against the fundamentalists who said the word of God was revealed in the Bible and had priority to all human uh, knowledge. And this case was even seen as a the uh, theological contestant uh, contest in a trial over modern science should be taught in schools versus typical classical um, Christian teachings. Now, uh, it was the, the big square off that ends up happening is when uh, Darrow challenges William Jennings uh, Bryan to the stand because before that they would not, um, the defense's case had been strictly on bringing in experts. So they brought in these great amount of experts to talk about evolution and to say, look at that we have all these things, we have the age of rocks and stuff. And the judge famously does this allows all expertise for the defense. Um, and he closes it. So what ends up happening is Clarence Darrow calls to the stand William Jennings Bryan. And he, he probably did, he had this in play for about three days prior to this that he wanted to do this. But he challenged uh, Bryan knowing that Bryan wouldn't refuse. And um, the prosecution did not want Brian to take the stand. Brian takes the stand as a, an expert in the Bible. He says he studied it all of his life. Um, in fact, he is a good expert. And so what ends up happening is Darrow ends up questioning um, Brian to the point where he looks um, very silly. He says, well... Um, do you believe in uh, Jonah and the well? Do you believe in the age of rocks? Do you believe this? And the real question came down to whether God created the earth in seven days and are these seven 24-hour days or are these seven days in... And um, Brian ends up saying, well, that's just in kind of the hands of God. We don't know. Um, those aren't his exact words, but roughly what he says. And this it really makes Brian look into a laughingstock that he is seen as contradictory at the time. And it's great for Daryl. But what makes it even this, um, this trial even more contested is that on final cross-examination of, um, of uh, Scott, uh, Scope... Uh, for ending arguments, Darrow rests the case for the defense not making an ending argument, which meant that according to Tennessee laws, that William Jennings Bryan would not be able to give an ending statement. Now, Bryan had prepared the statement weeks in advance, and he, um, he really wanted to give it. And because Darrow did this, and he did it on purpose so that Brian couldn't speak, it kind of is an anticlimactic end. But what ends up happening is both Clarence Darrow and Brian end up publishing their final closing arguments in newspapers, and hence we tend to think of these grand speeches that happen when actually... <laughs> Neither Brian nor Darrow gave their closing arguments. In fact, the most moving uh, of all of them was from Hayes. Um, 
And also, uh, uh, what ends up happening is Scopes is found guilty and is fined a hundred dollars, which is equivalent to around thirteen hundred dollars or almost fourteen hundred dollars um, in two thousand eight, seventeen, eighteen times. And the verdict uh, was overturned on a technicality. Um, that in fact that the judge hadn't allowed uh experts to be present and that's where it's overturned later scopes did in fact say that for the rest of his life he is going to make sure that he uh, would fight for the teachings of evolution because of this trial so for someone who is a substitute teacher this is really saying something and in fact there was a joke that uh um Darrow even offers the judge at the end of this trial to send him a copy of the origins of the species. And the judge says, okay, I'll allow that. Um, and so this is a real coup. Um, this as begins a show trial and is eventually appealed in the Supreme Court as the ACLU wanted it to be. Um, but it really allows for the first time that um, you could not outlaw evolution to be taught in the United States. Um, in public fu publicly funded schools and so this is a, a real coup that happens um to allow scientists to kind of win and it was believed that scientists kind of win even though the trial was largely just for show so i hope you learned a little bit more about uh the scopes monkey trial thank you